how to answer an exam standard question in ten easy steps. Step seven. Material variances. Well, all I'm going to do here is remind you of what you should already know. So we have our information, the narrative that we're going to use for our material variances. And what I would like to do is to highlight the bits that I am interested in for materials. If you look at the highlighted parts for materials, we have the standards, that's the standard usage and the standard price. Uh, we're also told about the actuals, the amount of wood used, how many units we produced, and the fact that there was no inventory of raw materials. Well, OK. All I've done is to take that information and separate it out, because that's the information that we need. When it comes to variances, I expect you to be able to do them. But it's often useful to think, ah, I only need salient points out of the total information in order to do a particular part. So, there it is. We've got the standards and the actuals wholly relating to materials. Now, this is what I use as a standard pro forma. If you notice, I've got my standard quantity, standard price, which I compare to my actual quantity, standard price, which I compare to my actual quantity, actual price. I use pro formas because I do not want to think. In fact, when it comes to variances, I want to make sure I can bang the numbers out without a thought passing through, through my brain. If we notice... By comparing the top two comparators, the standard price remains the same. So the only thing that we're comparing is the quantity, standard to actual. That means that we're looking at the usage variance. If we compare the bottom two, the actual quantity remains the same, and the only thing that differs is the price, standard to actual. So if we look at our overall pro forma, there we have it. Standard quantity, standard price. Actual quantity, standard price. Actual quantity, actual price. Compare the top two to get the usage. Compare the bottom two to get the price. Notice I've written here, work up. Because the way I do it is I work from the bottom to the top. OK? Don't have to do it that way. I just think it's the best way of doing it. So we start with actual quantity, actual price. Now, of course, if you're taking the actual quantity in kilos multiplied by the actual price in dollars, that means that you will end up with the total actual cost. And that should be given somewhere. In this case, it was given as 196,000. Actual multiplied by actual will give you total actual cost. Very easy. The next one, actual quantity. Well, how much material did we use? I think we're told that we purchased and used 40,000 kilos. And we multiply by that by the standard price. The standard price being the price per kilo that we expected to pay. And then finally, we've got the top one. Standard quantity, standard price. Now, let's just think about that standard quantity for a moment. It's not budgeted quantity. When I say standard quantity, what I'm saying is this. It's the expected quantity required for each unit. But hold on a moment. When we look at these variances, we have to remember materials are variable cost variances. And we would expect them to vary with the level of activity. So when we calculate the standard quantity... We want the standard quantity of actual output, because, of course, the actual output relates to the actual costs that we see below. So, the standard quantity was that we expected to use 2 kilos per unit. The actual output was 19,200 units. Those are the units that we actually produced using the actual amounts below. And we multiply by the standard price. So, we work from bottom to top, bosh, 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 get the numbers. Once we've got the numbers, it's terribly easy. We simply say top minus bottom. All my variance analysis is the same. 
So long as we say top minus bottom, if it's positive, it's favourable. If it's negative, it's adverse. Could be easier. Did you have to think? Well, the whole idea is you practice this a few times and you won't have to think. Is that okay? I want you to be thoughtless, and luckily most of you are. Now, what shocks me here is that you get four whole marks for that. Okay? Certainly never used to be the case, but it has been the case with more recent sittings. And all I'm going to say to the examiner is thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Four marks for that. For a standard computation. Anyway, let's move on. So, what is my comment? No the basic computations. If you do, you will score great marks in the exam. There'll be enough difficult stuff, but if you can do the basics well, you will get a solid mark. 